Hey everybody, Jim Neap from Jim Neap Woodworks again. Uh, today I'm going to try some different drilling operations that uh, I haven't done before on a CNC machine. One of the really cool things about a larger CNC like this is uh, it's really good for making things like fast track or cribbage games where you need to drill maybe hundreds of holes in a specific pattern. Um, to, you know to make games like to put pegs in or something and uh, that's fine with you know you, you need typically like whatever peg size you use you only need one drill bit size so you can go order a custom uh, bit for that and you're fine you know it can be an end mill or a, or a drilling bit but um, in some cases you want to drill pretty much any size that you might have in your uh, set of drill bits, your regular twist bits, or maybe um, some of your woodworking uh, brad point bits. Um, and I'm going to try doing that with the CNC because I'd like to be able to dr drill deeper holes and any size I want without having to go custom order the specific bits and a lot of these are hard to find. So let's see what that turns out and uh, I, I haven't tried this yet so I don't know how well it's going to work. Um, so let's, let's find out. Okay, the first issue is how do you chuck up any size drill bit in your CNC machine? So uh, when I bought the Avid machine, it came with, uh, I believe, the quarter inch and half inch collets. Um, and I ordered the full set, so I got eighth inch, quarter inch, three eighths, and half inch collets. Um, so then I thought, well, how do I get a 5 16 bit in there or something? And so, as I mentioned before, the first option is you can get, you know, a drill or end mill that's specifically an eighth, quarter, or half inch shank size, but then you can see on this one it has a, uh, in this case, it's an eighth inch shaft, but a larger, uh, I think this was, uh, this one's 171 thousandths of an inch diameter bit, um, end mill, and actually, this is actually a drill end on it. Um, that works good for, again, when, if, if I know I'm going to drill a lot of holes and I have time to order the, the bit and everything, that's, that's fine. Um, the other problem with this, though, is you can see it's not very deep. So I can't drill more than about three quarters of an inch deep with this. Um, and, you know, in some cases I might want to drill a lot deeper. Um, so my, I had kind of two choices. I thought at first I went looking for chucks, uh, kind of more of a standard drill chuck that had a collet end on that could that could fit on the end. Um, the problem with that is a good quality drill chuck is at least a hundred bucks. Um, I have it on my drill press. The other thing is anything like that is going to be really long and it's going to take up a lot of my Z stage travel. Uh, I have a tall Z stage, but I don't want to put three or four more inches of tooling in between my spindle and my drill bit. Um, so then I ran across. These, extra, these collet sets on Amazon, you can get a full collet set that goes from a sixteenth of an inch to a half of an inch, and it's just the inserts, it's not the nuts, but this full set was uh, around $25, so that's really cheap. Um, so far I've used them and they're machined very well um, and fit. So these are the ER20 size, and you can get them for the 32s as well, I believe, but so pretty cheap um, and now this fits my full set of drill bits um, on a regular uh, twist bit set um, you know I could just reuse my nuts and, and put them in there now one thing you have to look out with when using a collet with a drill bit is use really clean drill bits um, I don't know if you can see on this one here but this is one where uh, I think I had it in a hand drill and I and it it lost its grip on it um, and it basically peeled up a bunch of the metal around the drill bit shank. Uh, you can get away with using this drill bit now in still a, in a regular drill chuck with like three contact points or something, but you definitely don't want to put a bit like this in one of these collets. These collets, you know, fit very tightly all the way around and um, if there's a big burr like this uh, on the shank, it's just not going to fit in that collet. It'll probably even damage the collet when you tighten it down. You're going to get a lot of run out and stuff. So, you know, you want to make sure you have very uh, good conditioned uh, bits. So, you know, have a good set that you haven't slipped a, a regular drill chuck on 
and, and ground it up like this one or you know go sand it down and smooth it out um, but definitely want to look out for that um, so you don't damage your your collets or get a lot of run out okay the second thing we have to consider is the rpm that we really need to run a regular twist bit uh, the avid three horsepower router spindle um, the recommended range speed range for that is uh, its max speed is 24,000 RPM, um, and, and AVID sets the lower limit at 8,000 RPM. And if you, this is the torque curve right here, tor torque and horsepower curve of this spindle, and you can see on the red dotted line, that's the torque curve, and that's flat. So, uh, you know, this is a variable uh, frequency driven motor, so um, it it's going to have a pretty flat torque curve all the way across, which means that at full speed, 20, um, 24,000 RPM, which is 400 hertz here, this, this graph is in hertz, but that 400 represents 24,000 RPM. Um, you know, it's three horsepower. But well, if you go down to 8,000 RPM, it's only a one horsepower motor. And if you go down to 1,000 RPM, it's only one eighth horsepower. So one of the questions in my mind is, uh, can this um, even, does this spindle have enough horsepower to drill these holes? Um, and in fact, for like a half inch bit, we may not even want to run at a thousand RPM. We might want to run uh, somewhere around six or 700 RPM. So um, now the spindle will run fine. I've already tried it out. I'm gonna show next how you actually change the minimum speed in Mach 4 so it'll allow the software to actually set it that low because when the software comes uh, the way the package is, uh, is pre-configured it won't let you set settings in Mach 4 below uh, 8000 RPM but that can be changed. Um, so there's, there's, those are the two things. The other thing to consider with this is the cooling fan obviously isn't um, spinning as fast so uh, you know the motor uh, could have a tendency to overheat but again this isn't even going to work if we need more torque anyway so you know this is a pretty light operation it's, we're not milling here we're just drilling and we're going to be peck drilling which means you know we're going to drill and retract and drill and retract and you kind of want to do that anyway to keep the clear the chips out when you're drilling deeper so uh, my thought is that there should be enough horsepower left and this is very light duty for the spindle so we really shouldn't have a problem not having enough torque and not having enough cooling uh, with the spindle. But again, I haven't tried this, so we're going to find out. Okay, now we're looking at how do we uh, set the minimum RPM that you're allowed to use in Mach 4. So this kind of changes depending which version of Mach 4 and sometimes which version of the Avid configuration utility you're running to set this up. Um, in one of the older versions, I just simply had to go into the control configuration um, in Mach 4 for the spindle. Um, so if you go up to configure and then hit control, you'll, you'll get with all these tabs here and you select the spindle. And so this says um, 500 RPM here. This one was kind of funny. I changed it and it still let, didn't let me change it. So then I went into the machine INI file, which is where all this stuff is stored, and found a different... Uh, variable uh, that was min RPM for the spindle change that from 8,000 to 5,000 or 500 and now it lets me um, set those values so um, basically depending on what version you're running um, you can change that but again that will let you run your spindle down to minimum speeds here um, and I, I've tried this out in multiple versions of Mach 4 the motor runs fine it holds its RPM well the real question here again is um, you know, do I lose so much horsepower? Uh, do I have enough torque essentially to drill? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with a half inch bit because that's really the largest bit I want to drill. If it's anything bigger than that, I'm just going to machine with like a quarter inch end mill or something, machine my holes out, right? There's really, unless I need to do a really deep one, but I would, I, I would use a drill press for that. Um, I can't see myself drilling you know, hundreds of three-quarter inch diameter holes four inches deep. Um, but um, so so the kind of the ideal range for me is everything within a standard twist bit set, um, you know, a sixteenth up to, up to say half an inch. Um, so I'm going to start out with 500 RPM because that's the minimum horsepower. I know um, 
you know, as I mentioned, it's a flat torque curve, and I know I don't need to go through below 500 RPM. And even for a half inch bit in most woods, a uh, thousand RPM is just fine. But I figure if I can drill uh, half inch holes at 500 RPMs without stalling, then I don't really have to worry about any other drilling operation because they're all easier for the motor than that condition. So I'm gonna start out with that just to see if I if there are any problems with the torque. I'm gonna try and do a two or three inch deep hole um, and as I mentioned before, I'm going to do standard PEC drilling, and you know I, I use Vectric V-Carve Pro to set up. They have a they have a drilling um, tool path there, and it allows PEC drilling. And you can state, you know, how what your feed rate is on the plunge. You can state how deep do you want to drill each each uh, step before you retract and clear chips. So I I will show that when I uh, design the drill path. Okay, I've got a 2x4 set up on the side, uh, clamped it down so it's held down. That's one thing you want to be careful of. Um, you know, obviously we're going pretty deep and retracting, so there could be some force pulling up on this, so you really need to make sure it's clamped down. I'm going to do a half inch at 500 RPM with the brad point, and I should note I can see some run out on that bit, so... These cheaper collets uh, may very well have some run out. Um, this is a is the shank. You can't really see it. You kind of can there. It's taper. It's not tapered, but it's, it's milled down, so it's not actually a half inch shank. Otherwise, I could put on my higher quality half inch collet and see if that run out went away. Um, but it's either in the bit or uh, this cheaper collet. I think the collet is somewhere around three eighths or or so. Um, but we'll give this a try. the run out on that uh, brad point bit as well I could pretty visibly see it when I spin this one I don't see this is a newer set of twist bits that I bought recently I don't see any run out on this so I think this one might actually cut better and it's probably not the fault of the collet as as well as much as a, a cheaper set of brad point bits and it's just the uh, shank where it's turned down under half inch is just not concentric with the actual uh, half inch section of the drill bit. So let's see how this one cuts. <laughs> second one cut nice and clean um, sounded pretty good it didn't have like I said I didn't see the noticeable run out on the bit and it sounded a lot uh, it was a lot quieter it didn't have the rattling that the very first bit had with the run out this one here was because I forgot to reset the Z on the new bit that I put in so it did a rapid plunge for about the first half inch and that's why it had so much uh, chip out here um, but on the second one I reset the Z so then it did the the normal feed rate plunge um, and you can see even with a standard twist bit in uh, in this 2x4 it cut nice and clean this is a, a pretty new bit though so it's real sharp but so that's and it, I didn't hear any noticeable loading down um, where I thought the motor was close to stalling so I think this you know at 500 rpms worst case half inch 
uh, diameter bit um, worked just fine and it didn't seem to load down significantly more either. I was drilling uh, 300 thousandths per tap um, and then retracting to get the chips out. Um, if the bit wasn't you know, it's only going 500 RPM, so it was hot just like it normally is on my drill press, um, but not, you know, anything worse. So um, I think this works works great even with, you know, uh, the three horsepower spindle. Like I said, it's only really like a, an eighth horsepower under this condition, but it seems to be plenty of power for drilling. Um, now I'm going to go to some smaller bits and run a little bit higher speed just because I've got everything set up and I want to see if there's any issues with that. Okay, I should have mentioned before too, on the half inch bits I had a 20 inch per minute plunge rate which was uh, pretty slow but probably appropriate for that low of a speed in the big bit. Um, but now I got a 7 16 bit in, I'm going to turn it up to 800 RPM because that's a little more appropriate for this diameter of a bit. And I went up to 30 uh, inches per minute uh, plunge rate just because uh, I think that's that's fine. There's plenty of horsepower here for this, and I don't think the tear out will be too bad. dropping down to my smallest uh, collet size which is 16th of an inch. Uh, I set the speed to 1500 RPM and I slowed the plunge rate down to 20 because I really want to give this this bit, you know, even though I'm not doing a side milling operation, I'm drilling straight in um, with this coarse grain in this 2x4, I really want that bit to be able to center itself well when it's initially plunging in. So. Um, I'm slowing down a little bit so it doesn't uh, push off to the side as these these type of bits are so weak they deflect easy they have a tendency to wander a bit when they're finding their their center so um, let's see how this goes <laughs> Okay, I don't know if you could see it when it was drilling, but the sixteenth of an inch bit, I had aligned, not on purpose, but it happened to be right on the edge of that growth ring. And all three holes, you could see that the, the they're kind of oblong, you can tell, right? The, uh, the bit definitely deflected. It just doesn't have enough stiffness to it to hold it. Um, typically when on the drill press, when you're drilling a hole like this, you have to just be super slow while that thing is centering itself to start with. So especially a, a regular twist bit like this really isn't made for wood and so it doesn't have a sharp tip and it doesn't have any cutters out on the outside so this is like the worst case bit to use for this so I wouldn't recommend uh, this small of a bit um, like this in that case I'd probably get an end mill um, maybe you'd start it with an end mill but you know uh, it's just probably not something that's that at least in wood or this kind of like something composite like particle board, uh, MDF, or plastics would be fine because they don't have these large variations in density across the material like a set of growth rings would. So this was kind of a worst case test, but something you do need to be aware of. On the other hand, it, it drilled fine once it, if, once it was started. So I think that proves that you, know, you can do some deep drilling with regular twist bits pretty nicely on the CNC. Um, you have to set the speed slower um, you have to go change Mach 4 so you can get, you know, your, your minimum um, value that it will allow you to use down. But um, it, it works pretty good. And these 
cheap collets uh, don't seem to have too bad of a run out. Uh, my very first attempt here on this first hole was the bit itself that had a horrible run out. Uh, it was bad enough for me to see. So uh, I think pretty happy with this. My, uh, I wanted to get this done quick today because my four horsepower spindle upgrade is coming in two days. And so I really wanted to test this out in the worst case, three horsepower spindle. Uh, that is, uh, Avid CNC sells the three, four, and now 8.8 .8 horsepower spindles. So I wanted to test it with the worst case one. The four horsepower one should be even better, obviously because it has another horsepower, but it also has a, a un, more unusual torque curve. It actually makes its uh, peak, it kind of, it's not a super flat torque curve all the way across the speed range. It actually peaks at around 18,000 RPMs and then drops a little bit. So you get uh, a little flatter horsepower curve um, and you get a lot more torque down at the bottom end just because the curve is a little different plus the extra horsepower of the motor. So, um, you know, with those two spindles, the two bigger ones, you would absolutely have no no concerns with, with enough power, obviously, since the three horsepower ones seems to work fine. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put it down in the comments below. Thank you.